How did I get here? So after the last video, I decided to take some time off. I spent a week just kind of thinking about whether or not I wanted to continue recording this series or if I wanted to run away from society and live in the woods like a feral swamp witch. I decided that I didn't want to leave you guys hanging, so I am back. If you're new here, hi, please don't start with this video. <laughs> in fact, you can just skip this one if you want to. Honestly, it's okay. I do not blame you. I'll see you later. And even if you're not new here and you want to skip this one, totally okay. I will see you later. I will censor as much as I absolutely can and try to make this as palatable of an experience as I can for you. Um, and then I'll just carry that emotional trauma for the rest of my life. But as long as you get to see all the endings. Okay. So we are back in the secret basement in the tub of water and shit's happening again. <laughs> and the last time we decided to look away because, ew, but I guess this time we're just going to keep looking at it, keep looking at him doing what he's doing. He kept his hands on the sides of the torso. Ugh. It didn't move or think or feel. It was just another toy to him and he looked like he was enjoying himself. The flushed look on his face, the sweat beating down his brow. Jack was so excited and I wanted him to look at me like that. He wasn't bad at sex, but he never seemed as engaged as he was with that body. <laughs> Maybe true bliss for him came in the form of a motionless sex toy. Which is fine. You know, like, no judgment if you would rather have sex with an inanimate, non-moving sex toy than an actual person. That's fine do you but like there is an entire market of of different actual toys that can fulfill that role we don't need to involve another person in this at all like not a single other person needs to be involved in that we don't need to come to this extreme literally or figuratively that just happened to be a corpse Again, I feel like it's so much more time and energy to go and get somebody and prep them for this and, and use them for that method and get rid of them than it would be to just go on fucking Amazon for like a hundred bucks and then you're good. You're golden. Ain't nobody gotta know. It's fine. They've, there's so many things that you can get. You can get one that looks like a person. Solves your problem right there. Just put it, put an ice pack in it. I wasn't sure what I was thinking anymore as I felt the blood move around my body to my pelvis. Maybe I just liked watching him get off on something like this. I can do this. I can do this. <laughs> All right, so I guess this time we're just gonna meet his nasty little gaze and be like, I'm fine. I looked at him. I didn't care that he had maggots all over him. Maybe it would help him. Is it bad that my first thought is, no, you're gonna get a yeast infection? Like, just the horror of this entire situation, and, you know, I'm worried about her, um, feminine health. <laughs> I wonder how it will feel. Ooh. <laughs> oh, God. 
let's just say he didn't um, clean himself off before things happened. No, 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 no. I can do this. I can do this. Okay, well, he still ended up throwing me on the body pile, so that was worth it. Um, I think last time we just cried, so. Although I think we never stopped, we can make an we can make another choice, right? Why don't we go ahead and 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 scream? I started to scream. At first it was just loud screaming, but then I started to scream for Jack. You bastard, let me out of here, you fucking sicko. I screamed. I wanted to scream until my throat got numb. Maybe someone would hear me. I doubted that. We live too far from our neighbors. But it didn't hurt to try. You're disgusting. Let me out of here. I screamed more. My voice was starting to feel raw as I heard the door opening. My eyes widened and I looked at Jack, who looked unamused. Let me out of here, goddammit. I screamed in his face. He pulled a vial off the table and looked at it. You are very loud. He growled as he pulled out the syringe. Don't touch me with that. I started to pull at the restraints, and Jack pushed the needle into my arm. Silence. I could feel the drug coursing through my veins. I thrashed around on the ground, but that just got my blood flowing. I was starting to feel tired faster. You fucker. I swore as I felt my head hit the cold pavement once again. How many times was he going to drug me? I wasn't sure, but if he wanted me to stay quiet, he could make it a point of drugging me more often. I smirked inwardly. Bastard. My eyes slowly closed and my screams were silenced by the injection he gave me. Okay. Oh. Is this when he was talking to what's his face? The the lady. Okay. Uh fuck you. Yeah, I'm awake. What about it? Surprised. No, no, that's not the word I'd use for it. Jack kneeled down and looked at me. Disheartened? Disappointed? Perhaps one of those things. He leaned my head back and looked at my throat, quietly examining me. What's wrong? He wasn't shaken by me speaking. His cold, steel eyes just drifted lazily to my face as he leaned in. I'm just trying to figure out what I'm going to do with you. Isn't killing me what you decided? No. I haven't decided that. You killed everyone else so easily. I do. But I have a compulsion to restrain myself for you. This is restraint. This is restraining yourself. This, this is you being considerate. I paused and kept my eyes on him. You don't have to kill me. I realize that. But I also know what would happen if I were to say, keep you alive. You have plenty of people to run to for help. And I can't have you running off to the police telling them what I've done. Jack got up from his spot where he was talking to me. I wouldn't call the police. He chuckled softly and leaned against the table. Nice try. He looked at the table where he was scratching his knife and ran his fingers across the gouged surface. Why did you have to come down here? He watched his fingers move across the surface. Yeah, it's all my fault. <laughs> How dare I? He crossed his arms and we sat in the quiet. His quiet spells tore at my mind. Uh, I feel like if we yell at him, he's just going to get mad at us. But honestly, fuck this guy. Why don't you just finish me off, you creep? Oh, does he? And then he does. So, at least we got the happy ending. Okay, I went back. We're just going to be quiet, I guess. I stayed quiet. I wanted to see what would happen next. I wanted to comply. I didn't want to upset him anymore. 
Jack looked at me as I stayed quiet and his face stayed emotionless. He walked back to me and sat me up instead of letting me stay on the ground as he did. That's better. There has to be a way to preserve you. Jack leaned his head on my legs, rubbing his face against them. I love the way you feel. He put his hands on my thighs and rubbed his hands against my skin. I shuddered and said nothing. He looked up at me and put his hands on my face. If only you understood. I wanted to tell him that I understood him. Do I, though? But my mouth wouldn't let me speak. I just watched him quietly until he lifted his head and wandered off. Jack walked over to the corner of the room and opened a refrigerator. He put his hands on the contents inside and looked at me. I want to share something with you. You know, maybe this is like, I know, I know sharing is the considerate thing to do. Maybe this is a situation where you just keep it to yourself, homie. I don't want to know what you're about to pull out of this fridge. I really, really don't. He held up a bag of blood and my eyes widened. Yeah, I was right. I really didn't want to know. You can really get anything in that university. <laughs> Are you a vampire? Don't be foolish. Maybe your head was stuck in that fantasy world of yours for too long. Jack took a seat next to me, examining the bag. He really does not seem to understand H humor. Just any humor. <laughs> humor makes him mad, so. That should have been my first red flag. <laughs> Jack took a seat next to me, examining the bag. His eyes fixed on the red liquid inside. Maybe it's not so fantastical. After all, you are sitting in the basement with a serial killer. <laughs> Oh, so he's allowed to be funny. <laughs> Just not us. Jack looked at the bag, then at me. I had an idea. He squeezed the bag over my head. Why? I watched as the sim I watched as the seams started to split and the blood sprayed all over me. Someone else's blood coating my body. The red liquid spilling all over the floor as I looked at my hands. My eyes widening, but I couldn't say anything or move. I shifted my eyes up to him and looked at the protrusion in his pants. I wasn't sure what I was seeing, but I felt his lips on mine as he pushed me hard against the wall. The blood not deterring his hungry kiss. Gross. 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 Ah, oh, he scratched me? What a little bitch. Fuck you. I tried to kick him away from me. Get off. I screamed. He looked at me blankly. Why are you still talking? Oh my god, I hate this guy so much. He picked up the vial of whatever it was that he had been injecting me with and pushed the needle into it. I don't want you to move now. He pushed it into my neck. Yay. You know, he really would have done well in like the 50s, wouldn't he have? <laughs> He pushed his thumbs into my eye sockets. Why? Why? I started to scream and move around as much as I could, but all I could hear was popping underneath his thumbs. I couldn't even begin to reel in pain before he put his knife to my neck, the blade ever present. Darling, I could feel him slicing my throat and my blood spilling from the new wound he created. 
I dropped to the ground in the darkness. Well, that's another ending. <laughs> okay, I'm back here. Oh God, okay. So you know, I, I do not like doing the route that leads you to being like, oh my God, I totally understand you. I love you. Let's be together forever. And I always save it for last, but like, <laughs> I vehemently do not want to do that route. I don't know if my fragile little brain can handle <laughs> dialogue choices that are like, oh yeah, I totally understand why you're doing this. This is so amazing and creative and you're so smart. Like you really are just as smart as you actually think you are because wow, this is so awesome. Let's do more of this. Yay. But you know there has to be at least one ending that ends like that and maybe we just get it out of the way all right what is it blood from one of my victims he gripped down on the bag it's almost like i can feel their pulse in the blood it was their life and i took it from them he rubbed his lips against the plastic and I watched him. <laughs> like he really is. He really thinks that he is so smart and nobody else gets him because he's just too smart for the world. And he's not. He's not. Nothing about this is sophisticated or smart. Nobody would look at this and be like, what a work of art. Oh my God, you are just so amazing because you don't like pop culture and you like to kill people. Every move, slow, deliberate, almost loving. He took a deep breath. Jack looked at the bag and then at me. Yeah, then he covers us in blood. Blech. And then, oh God, I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to. Oh God. Oh, oh, oh. I'm already regretting my choices and I haven't even made it yet. Okay, I guess we'll... Guess we're doing that. Oh, he killed me either way. I hate this game. <laughs> okay. So we're just gonna... Okay, so at this point we were screaming and crying. So I guess now we just go to sleep. <laughs> what could I do? I could just sleep. There wasn't any point in freaking out or getting upset. Oh, of course not. What would the point be in that, <laughs> of being upset about this situation? <laughs> I had to think about this logically. If I wanted to stay on Jack's good side, maybe he'd just let me go about my life as if nothing happened. If I just followed his instructions. I closed my eyes and tried to steady my breathing. I had to stay calm. There was no reason to freak out now, right? So I just won't say anything then. I'm just gonna glare at him. I glared at him and he looked at his knife. Do you hate me now? Yes. <laughs> he brought the knife under my eye and started to- Why? What is it with this man in my eyeballs? Like really? Really? The blade entered my cheek and I screamed, the pain shooting across my face as he slashed deep into my skin. He held my head up and a smile creeped across his face in a disturbing fashion. My eyes widened, and he looked at the tip of the knife. I could make you look like anyone else. Then you wouldn't even resemble my beloved anymore. 
Will that silence the voices? Probably not, Jack. He slid the knife across my face again, and a new wave of pain washed over me. I let out another scream. He let out a low shudder and gripped my face, forcing the blood from it. Fascinating. Usually the screams of the dead don't excite me as much as you are. He squeezed harder and I let out another scream. Cool, so torturing me, your wife, is like way more exciting and entertaining for you than torturing a rando off the street. Love that for me. <laughs> he dropped my head on the ground. Perhaps you are of some use to me. I hate him. I hate him. Oh my god. So we're just gonna be quiet, I guess. Is that donor blood? He put his hand on the top of my head and leaned in. Oh no, I got this myself. I just had to steal the anticoagulant. That sick grin appearing on his face once more. Okay, then he covers me in blood. Okay, I guess there isn't really a way to uh, do anything else. Uh, so just die. Okay. Okay, so last time we had the option well, I guess we've all, we always had the option to follow him or stay home. We stayed home last time. So I guess this time we'll just follow him out of the house. I mean, I know we're going to just end up in the same fucking situation, but let's see the fun way we get there. I couldn't take it anymore. I was going to find out what was going on. I got my keys and went out to my simple commuter car. I got my keys and went out to my simple commuter car. Jack had teased me about the shuddering heap of steel before and asked if I didn't want something newer and flashier, but it hadn't mattered to me. I never thought I'd be grateful to have an inconspicuous vehicle. Of course, I also never thought I'd need to do something like this. I followed Jack through traffic carefully, trying to keep some distance between us. I chewed my lip nervously as he missed the turn for the hotel his conference was at, driving further into town. We ended up at the university where he taught. It was a private school with stringent admission requirements and nightmarishly high tuition costs. Many of the students had a relative who was an alumni or made generous donations to the school. I avoided it as much as possible unless Jack needed me to drop something off for him. There was a suffocating air of superiority and academic elitism that permeated the campus. Well, you know, that makes sense. That makes sense because that's what Jack is. And the thing is, he's not. He hasn't even earned those titles. There's nothing about him that would make you think, wow, he is academically elite. What a superior human. No, garbage. Sub, subhuman garbage, below garbage. I always felt like people looked down on me for studying at the local state university instead. Jack had confided in me his own frustrations with the sense of entitlement some of his students had. He made a point to announce on the first day of the semester that the only thing that mattered in his classes was an effort to understand the material. I'd heard that he acquired a reputation for being cold and uncompromising. But on occasion, he would get appreciative emails from former students thanking him for all of his help during his office hours. I always liked to see that. Sometimes, I'd come into the living room and he'd be on his computer, eyes bright with something like joy. It was an expression that went away when I called his name and he looked up, and I always felt like I was intruding on something. Thinking back on it made my stomach twist anxiously. Who's probably looking at dead bodies? Because he's disgusting. Jack pulled into one of the parking lots on campus and I found an open spot on a side street nearby. He walked quickly and I struggled to keep him in my line of sight. I followed him across campus. It was empty and eerily quiet, no students hurrying past me on the pathway or idling in the grass. I kept my distance so I wouldn't be spotted, ducking behind the corner of the nearest building when he suddenly stopped. There was someone in front of him. 
Who was that girl? Oh, it was the one that he stabbed in the basement. She was standing there like she had been waiting for him. I thought her face looked familiar, but I couldn't figure out where I had seen her before. I strained my ears to listen to what they were saying. You don't have the authority to speak to me like that, Ellen. Oh, that's Ellen. I mean, yes, I probably should have known that, but I, I was dealing with some other things in that moment. I could barely make out Jack's voice, a harsh, almost whisper. I'm still your instructor. I want to see you after school. If you need my office hours, they're on the syllabus. Although I'm sure you already know them by now. Jack took a few steps away, but she followed him. I took a deep breath and peeked around the corner. I didn't know what I was going to see. I know what you've been doing. She stepped closer to him, keeping her voice low. I want to be a part of it. Whatever she was talking about, Jack didn't deny it. He sighed and touched his forehead lightly, not bothering to mask his exasperation. The student didn't care. She reached up and grasped his shirt, even closer now. I inhaled shakily and struggled to stay where I was, wanting nothing more than to stomp over and separate them. Why wasn't he pushing her away? The proximity of their bodies made me tremble with anger and confusion. If you truly understood what I was doing, you would know better than to confront me about it. I understand you, Professor. I understand, and that makes you even more appealing to me. Please let me do this with you. You sound desperate. Do you have nothing better to do with your time than harass old men? I can't with this guy. <laughs> He finally swatted her hands away from him. But my relief was short-lived because she didn't give up. She grabbed his arm as he turned away, desperation seeping into her voice. Please wait. Jack's expression hardened and I knew he'd run out of patience. Suddenly his hand wrapped around her throat and he slammed her against a tree, the sound of her body hitting the bark making me jump. No more waiting. If you're going to be an impatient brat, then I'm going to treat you like one. Meet me at my house at 1 a.m. tomorrow. My thoughts short-circuited. I couldn't believe what I just heard. I kept watching, hoping I'd imagined it, hoping I misheard somehow. Jack leaned in and whispered something I couldn't hear into her ear. She grasped his arm with both hands, fingers digging into his skin. Her cheeks flushed faintly and she looked up at him, gaze heavy-lidded and submissive, eager to please him. Yeah. She bit her lip in anticipation as he lowered his face, close enough that he could press his mouth against hers. My heart beat against my chest loud and frantic like a mine canary in a cage, telling me it was time to leave, but I was frozen. Yes, sir. She practically moaned those words. He dropped her, and she collapsed in a startled heap on the ground. Don't you have a class right now? Jack said it so calmly, as if their earlier conversation hadn't even happened. He stormed off, and I watched until he disappeared into one of the buildings across the way. She had pulled herself upright and just sat there, a hand pressed to her chest as she caught her breath. So I guess she had come over. Okay, so that's probably what woke us up was them struggling in the living room getting her down there and then by the time we got down there she had just been killed like it seemed pretty pretty fresh either they were struggling or they were like struggling as they went down the stairs and then he was like Kh. either way I mean he wasn't cheating on us with an alive person I guess so I feel like if we leave, it's just going to lead us to, like, back to the house. So I'm going to, I'm going to see, and then if I'm right, then I'll just come back and we'll talk to her, I guess. <laughs> I have found exactly what I came to find, and it was almost more than I could bear. Part of me had hoped that Jack would prove me wrong. I thought I would feel ridiculous, 
maybe even ashamed of getting so carried away. But I had been right, and I wasn't ready for that. I ran all the way across campus, every panicked footfall seeming to echo. I felt alone in a way I never had before. I couldn't even ask myself why. I just knew the person I loved most, who encouraged me and slept beside me and always remembered our anniversary, had hurt me in a way no one else could. I climbed back into my car, clutching the steering wheel, harsh gasps tearing through my lungs. Heartbreak lanced through my chest and humiliation heated my face. I had never felt so betrayed. I wanted it to be a nightmare. I squeezed my eyes shut and pinched myself, leaving painful, discolored welts along my arm. For a long time, I sat there shivering and sobbing. All I wanted to do was curl up in bed, but then I wondered how long this had been going on, how many people he was seeing. How many of them had come into our home? I cried until I felt I didn't have any tears left. I felt a light tap on my shoulder as I looked up from the couch. I must have dozed off as I looked up at Jack. How long have you been taking a nap? He looked bewildered and confused. Jack wasn't used to seeing me sleeping like this, especially right on the couch. I figured it'd be a good time to wake you up. I looked at the time. It was 5 p.m. Maybe it wasn't late enough for me. Yeah, I'm really tired. You don't want to go out for our anniversary? Fuck no! Jack asked as he took a seat on the couch near me. I tried my best not to flinch away, not to yell in his face. Not yet, at least. I'd catch him with that student of his. Then it'd be easy. No, I don't think I'm feeling well. Maybe I'll just go to bed early and relax. If you don't mind, we can go out another night. Why would I mind? You shouldn't have to go out if you don't feel well. I'll grade some papers to pass the time. Go upstairs and rest up, call me if you need anything, and I'll bring it to you. Don't try to act all nice and sweet, because the second we find out what you're doing, you're like, oh, well, you're not useful to me anymore, so <laughs> die. I mean, Pop your eyeballs or whatever. <laughs> whatever. There was a sinking feeling in my gut, but I hugged him gently and walked up the stairs. How long has this been going on? That poker face. How could he just stand there and tell me he loved me? I walked over to the bedroom and laid back down, closing my eyes and only listening to what Jack was doing. He had turned on the TV to some news program and he said he was grading papers. Which might have been true. I didn't hear him moving around down there. I laid awake, restless, looking at the time. I could hear him opening the door. This was my chance. I'm just going to confront him. I stormed down the stairs and looked at the bookcase. It was moved, and there was a door on the other side of it. I hadn't noticed that before. It was pretty large, and an old house I never went exploring. I pushed open the door. The door was heavy and slid across the floor, the rubber ceiling in that ghastly smell. The door was heavy and slid across the floor, the rubber sealing in that ghastly smell from downstairs. How could I never have noticed the smell? Honestly, though. I looked down the stairs and I could see a light coming from the other portion of the basement. I huffed and trotted down the stairs as quietly as I could. I put my hand over my mouth. That smell. It just got stronger as I moved into the basement. As I descended further, the door behind me slammed shut. I stepped down on floor. It was soft. I looked at Jack's back as he rubbed his hand across something... something human. Aha! I knew it! I knew you were... He turned around. Yeah, that's a completely different person. Interesting. Cheating on me? So I guess, does she just not, not come at all? I turned my head, looking at the thing behind him. Or maybe she's in there, I just haven't seen her yet. It was a corpse. It's hollowed and shrunken face looking at me. 
I screamed and turned away quickly. I needed to get out of here. Run as fast as I could. Cheating on you? His voice echoed through the basement. I ran up the stairs and grabbed the door. Cheating would insinuate that I have a normal sex drive. I guess! <laughs> it was locked and I could hear Jack's footsteps behind me. I shook the door and looked at the number pad. It was... I was locked in here. But if you need your delicate self-worth to be stroked that much, see, you act as if you like me and you're nice to me and you care about me and you're worried, but then the second I find out your little secret, I'm worth nothing, I'm stupid, I'm useless, uh, I just need to be preserved as a dead person because that's all the worth that I have. No, I'm not having an affair. My grip on the doorknob seemed to be slipping as I felt a hand around my mouth and something sharp and thin stabbed me in the neck. My darling. My poor, sweet Cece. I felt myself crumble in his hands. No one leaves here alive. He let me roll down the stairs and I felt myself hitting my head on the soft floor below. It was caked in liquid. This close up? I knew it was blood. Okay, and then I think we're just back in the basement. <laughs> I guess we won't say stab me, daddy. <laughs> Let's just ask him why, I guess. Jack stopped to look at me for a moment. He didn't seem like he knew the answer to the question. Does it matter why? If I knew the answer to that question, perhaps you wouldn't be down here. Wasting away with the rest of the foul corpses that line our basement. Jack touched the torso of a feminine-looking stomach. He watched his hand caress the bruising skin. He looked back at me. There's no point in thinking about it now. I tried to move. My limbs were starting to get some feeling back and I started to thrash around. He moved over to the table and grabbed the syringe. Perhaps I didn't drug you enough the first time. He pushed the needle in my skin. I slumped over and looked up at him. He didn't seem remorseful. Of course not. He's a fucking sociopath. He just does what he thinks is expected of him, but then the second that his true nature is revealed, it's just emotions off. He doesn't say, he doesn't give a shit. Okay, so we're, we didn't scream. I'm just going to be quiet. And then maybe we'll live. I don't think that's what I want. <laughs> I don't think that's what I want from this encounter in any of them. But, you know, we'll, we'll give it the old college try. I didn't scream. I bit my bottom lip trying to ignore the searing pain in my leg as he stopped cutting me. He put the knife down next to him. He pressed his lips against the wound, bleh, and then he ate it. Disgusting. I feel like this is going to get our sanity down. I wonder if anything happens if we get our sanity down. Low enough. And it goes down again. Oh! Okay, how can I preserve you from myself? He spoke to a random body. He ran his fingers through his hair and leaned in. How can I make sure my beloved doesn't rot? Things were easier. When I cared less. He pressed his forehead against the corpses. He whispered and cooed as he rubbed his hands against them. He pulled out his knife and looked at the edge. It was an expensive Japanese knife that I had gotten him a while back. Yeah, I know, he didn't lose it. He's just being nasty with it. So if we cry, no, that, that gives us sanity. So let's go to sleep, I guess. Yeah, I'm awake. We're gonna be quiet. Uh, is any of these? No, okay. Oh, 
Okay. So this is right. This is what he did right before he popped our eyeballs. But now we have dialogue. I just watched back. I let out a little sound of pleasure and a faint blush brushed his face. Yikes. Jack mo moved towards the table and rubbed a soft, warm cloth on my face, pushing the blood from my face as I looked up at him. Thank you. Thank you. For? He didn't say another word. Oh, for wiping the blood. He rubbed his palm against my face and let out a soft sigh once more. He propped me up again and cut my zip ties. Stay put. It's not as if I can move anyways. <laughs> Jack held up the needle. Needle? I looked at it and shook my head. I don't... Please don't. I begged him, and he looked at me with concern in his eyes. It'll be the last time. He pushed the needle into my arm. I could feel the medicine filling my bloodstream as I went limp again. Jack got up, looking at the tip of the needle and the mostly empty bottle of medicine. Jack looked at his clothes and closed his eyes. He walked away from me, and I could hear the door shutting behind him. I closed my eyes. Was it that drug that was making me so tired? Well, yeah. <laughs> I opened my eyes and looked around. What time was it? I didn't even know anymore. I tried to move, but I just fell on the floor. The metal smell filling my nose, and I sighed softly. This wasn't going to work. I just watched the floor for a moment. The smell of the room... This place was just starting to feel familiar, and I wasn't sure I could call that a blessing or a curse. I rolled on my back as best as I could and looked at the ceiling. I was surprised the paint wasn't peeling from it by now. How long was he planning to keep me down here? I didn't see Jack again. What? I waited patiently for him to return, but he never did. What? What became of him? I never knew. I wandered the basement, trying to figure out the door code. After three tries, it would lock up again for at least four hours. I waited. I waited those four hours to pass. It felt like an eternity. I finally unlocked the door. It was my birthday. No one was left in the house except me. Oh shit. Did Ellen get him? Did Ellen fucking kill him? Because that would be hilarious. That would be fucking hilarious if she murdered him while we were just sitting in the basement waiting. <laughs> or he just took off. So that he wouldn't have to do the dirty work of getting rid of me. Because he was like, it's the last time that I'll do this to you. And then he just fucked off. And you know what? Best ending. I like that. That's good. <laughs> Okay, so we've got half of the endings. I feel like the other half is probably going to be um, in the route where we followed him to the university and we go and talk to Ellen. Especially because we have a character missing. And this is the last route as far as I'm aware, so I'm assuming we're going to be following Ellen uh, through her adventure. So, <laughs> I, I made it through three of six endings can do this <laughs> and I will see y'all in the next one I guess <laughs>